Well, welcome back. I guess you want some more. Well, believe me, you ain't seen nothing yet. Let us continue to grow some wine. Alrighty, so uh, we had just started the second year of six years. I had just revealed this and found dun dun dun, it was a stark and stormy year. So that's gonna affect both of us and the quality of our wine. Jen especially, because that means this place currently will produce no wine at all. Now, but there's a couple other things that happen on here as well. First of all, you can see these four color markers all move forward one space. And that refers to these guys, each one moves forward one space. Now in different ones, you know, it could be different like, uh, like in this one, hey, green moves three and blue moves one. So you can never really be quite certain how they're gonna move. And what these represent is the current value that the judges of the fair that was gonna happen at the end of the third year place on the look of your wine, the smell of your wine, the taste of your wine, and the alcohol content of your wine, I guess. So, if you are, if you specialize in one thing or another, and that really comes down to which expert you hire. Like for instance, I've still got this expert in, in bouquet. And so I really hope that the green gets quite a bit higher because then I can deploy my green expert and tell, and he'll tell everybody at the fair how awesome my wine smells. And you know, if, if green had gotten this far, let's say, that means I'd get three points because I had that expert go on about how great my wine smells, as an example. But on this stormy day, everything went up equally. So right now, everything is of equal value. Uh, you know, they're all, and, not, and so this goes into the planning for the end of the third year, the fifth year and the sixth year. Because these things will never go down. Uh, you, know, you know, things will just become more and more valuable. I mean, in, in one game it might be everybody just cares about alcohol, nobody cares about taste. You know, and this is what, might be, what it might look like at the end of the game or, or whatever. But we will reveal, well, after this one, what? Four more weather tiles. So these things will change and tastes will evolve over the years, basically. So that happened. And then also, A, B, and C. This is Alexander, Beatrice, and Constantino. These three people. These guys, or, and, this, and this lady, represent rich people. Crazy rich people, hedge fund managers, I don't know who the heck they are, who love, love, love wine, and are really, really interested in the wine that we are producing. And if we play our cards right, we can make friends with these people and start getting favors from them if we basically give them wine. So we'll have to worry about that in a little bit. But right now, these three values here indicate what Alexander Beatrice and Constantino particularly like. This year, Alexander loves white wine. Beatrice this year is not very picky and will pay attention to any wine that has a value of at least four. Sometimes she's really picky and the number has to be really high. You never know whether Alexander is gonna like red or white. And you know, sometimes she's high, right now she's low. And Constantino, who always cares about what region the wine comes from, wants wine from regions two, four, five, and eight. And I never mentioned it, but you'll notice this is region two, four, five, and eight. And you can see on the board too. See, I've got, I've, I, so interestingly, Constantino is interested, oopsie, I knocked everything around. Constantino would be interested in my wine because it's from region five. And, uh, but, you know, and Jen's too, or mine too, I'm sorry, mine or Jen's, because we both have wines from region five. She wants low value wines, so that's good, and he wants white wines. So Jen's actually looking pretty good because all she's got is white wine. So this, this might be the year that she decides to try to impress some of these people so she can start getting favors. All right, so but anyway, enough about that. This new information is out and we start going again. I'm still the first player, so I've got to pick up my marker and move it around. And now you can see how the, you know, the, the track order has changed. Now for this year, building cellars is always gonna be a little bit more expensive than it would have otherwise been. But I can't stay here, I can't build another cellar anyway. What I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna continue trying to improve the quality of my wine. I'm gonna move diagonally down here, which doesn't cost me anything. I'm moving one space, diagonals count, so it doesn't cost me anything. And since there's nobody here, I don't have to pay any extra fees to hire wine scientists, for lack of a better term. Now, for every thousand bucks I spend, I can get one or two of them. And I have no money. Well, it's time to uh, take a loan, I guess. I'm gonna take a loan. And so, now I'm gonna start losing funds from my bank account every year, but I just got 3,000 cash on hand. And what am I gonna do? You bet it. I'm just gonna spend it all. 2,000 out of 3,000 immediately goes into hiring two scientists, since I happen to have two houses where they can live. 
Now this is crazy, quite frankly, because not only do I have to pay the 2,000, but I'm gonna to have to pay 2,000 at the end of every year to keep these guys employed. And that's a problem um, because I'm broke. But I do have a plan. I'm basically what I'm planning to do is for my next action, I'm gonna come over here and sell some of my wine so I can get some more money in the bank so I'll be able to cover their salaries. And as long as I have them on staff, I'll be producing higher and higher and higher quality wine because I'm going for the quality, quality, quality. Jen's producing cheap, crappy wine. I'm gonna produce the best wine the world has ever seen from Portugal. So I hired these two guys, but I had to take a loan to do it. Okay, so that's my first action. And now Jen, her first action, well, she can't buy another vineyard and she doesn't want to come here. She's got a thousand bucks left. If she she'd go to any of these for free, well, no, this would cost a thousand to come here. She could pass, she's not gonna do that. I think what she's gonna do is, she, yeah, she's gonna pay a thousand bucks and she's gonna hopscotch all the way down here. And Jen is gonna beat me to the punch. Jen is gonna sell some stuff before I get a chance to sell some stuff. Now remember, this is selling to the local market, all of these spaces, this is selling to the foreign market. Selling to the foreign market doesn't really make you money, it scores you prestige and victory points. Selling to the local market get, generates cash. And Jen, she could see, she could tell that I was kind of, she could, she, she intuited that I was gonna move down here because I needed the money and where else am I gonna go? So she, oh, I'm gonna move down here, I was gonna carefully, so Jen is beating me to the punch. By coming down here, she's gonna, if I still wanna pay cash, I'm gonna have to pay her to go there. And so that might change my plans. Anyway, so Jen's coming down here and she, it, it cost her 1,000 to hopscotch and now she can sell um, one wine of, she's got three she can choose from. She can sell one to this local market. Now, all she has is whites. So she can take any of these spaces. In this space, these spa the numbers represent how much money will go into her bank account based on the value, not the quality, but the value of the wine. Because you're okay, this is, a, this is a value three wine. These are value two wine. I'm sorry, no, this is a quality. You know, this, you know, there's a winery here, so this is higher quality wine. This is a, this is a, a three quality. These are crappy. These are, these are you know, not particularly good. They're two quality wines. But since they come from the Algarve region, they implicitly have plus one to their value. So each one of these has a default value of three. In the, in the eyes of the outside world, even though this is higher quality, they all have the same value. They're all threes. So, but here's the thing. Now, if Jen doesn't do something with this wine, at the end of the year, it's gonna get pushed out to the right and it will basically go bad. So Jen wants to do something before that happens. So Jen is gonna to choose to sell this wine. Now, it started with a quality of two, but plus one means currently it's at a value of three. So she could put it into this space. And that means she would increase her bank account by three or you know 3,000 bucks. But she's not done yet. Remember these cubes we've been using, right? Um, right, oh yeah, all these cubes we've been adding. These cubes represent the renown of the region. And since this value three wine that Jen is trying to sell to the local market came from the Lisboa region, Jen is gonna tap into that renown and basically whenever you, whenever you have to determine what the value of a wine is, you determine it based on the, um, the, the, the default quality, plus, you know, bonuses like, you know, this plus one, plus using the cubes. You can use, whenever you're de determining quality, one or two cubes to increase the quality. Jen is gonna take as many as she can. She's gonna take two of these four cubes. And um, so that, this remember this, was, this has a default value of two, plus one because it's from the region. So it's three plus four plus five means this is really, this has a value of five. These cubes go away. And so Jen will actually take this and put it in the five spot. Now she actually, we just throw this away. It doesn't really matter. And she takes one of her barrels and she has claimed the value five white wine in this. It, it, so she's basically now created a contract with this hotel to provide them value five white wine. And so her bank account increases. One, two, three, four, five. You have to be really careful about that, the way this thing kind of snakes around. It's very easy to think of it anyway. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And since she just crossed this threshold, she just scored four points. She went from three points to seven points at the end of the game because she's got more money in the bank. 
And now the interesting thing is, this hotel will no longer, from anybody, they will not accept a contract with somebody else for value five white wine. Jen has sewn that up. And so she's blocked me from, if I had wanted to sell one of my white wines at value five, I couldn't do it. Because that's what these barrels represent. These barrels represent relationships, either business relationships with the foreign market or the local market, or personal relationships with these rich people so that you can get benefits from them. So anyway, so Jen has sold, she's made 5,000 bucks in the bank, it's increased her victory points. If she ever needs to go to the bank to get money, she's got more money she can grab, and more importantly, she beat me here. So now, so we've both done one action, and we move on to our second action. I'm still the first player, and now if I wanna go here, I have a thousand bucks and I have to pay it to Jen. And I just don't know if I am happy about that at all. But I desperately need to sell some wine because at the end of the year, I'm gonna owe one for, um, what do you call it? One for my loan and then another two for my salary. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three. Now my, my savings can save it. I can, I, you know, I've, I've got enough money in the bank. So I could wait and I could do this later but what else could I do? I could move back up here. Well, I don't need another vineyard. I, I, you know, it's going to cost me more to do that. I don't want to pass right now. I don't want to just... Because you know, the interesting thing is, over the course of this game, you only get 12 actions. You know, Six years, two actions each, only 12 actions. I don't want to pass and spend it and waste an action. Now, interesting, I could pay the thousand, come here, give a thousand to Jen. Oh, that'd suck. I could pay that thousand to Hopscotch over here, take one of my wines and sell it to the foreign market and start building up, you know, victory points. I'll get victory points immediately plus victory points for the end of the game. Or I don't have to pay anything and I could come to the bank and I could just make a withdrawal. I could take money out and therefore I'd have money on hand that I could use for other stuff. But if I take out too much money, I won't be able to pay off this loan or the, uh, my salaries. So how much could I take out if I, if I went to the bank? Uh, let's see, I need to have, let's see, one, two, actually not very much. So I don't think it makes sense going to the bank. Oh, honey, well played. It sucks. I'm going to move there. And it did, didn't cost me anything to move only one space, but I have to pay Jen a thousand bucks. Ouch. Ouch. Okay, so here we are. And now I get to sell the local market too. And let's see what I'm gonna sell. Now I've got choices of red and white. The higher value I sell, the more money I can put in the bank. And I need to put money in the bank so I can pay for my loans and my salaries. Let's see, now this, um, they, they all have quality three. This one stays at quality three. So I mean this one has a value of three. But these two have a value of four because they have a quality three plus they're sitting in this cellar. So they're a value of four. And what's more, I could pump them up with these guys, with these cubes that haven't been taken yet. I think I'm gonna sell this one. I don't wanna sell this one, because if I let this age one more year, it'll jump in value by two points. So I'm gonna take this guy. I'm gonna sell this to the local market. It's a, it's a quality three, but plus one. So right now, this has a value of four. So it's gonna be able to go, and it'll be sold to Caso de Fedos, and I will increase my bank account by four. But I'd like to jump up higher if I could. So. I'm going to take the other two cubes from this region, but because you know, I got Jen has grabbed half of them, I better grab the other half before they're gone. And so that has increased. That means the quality of this is actually six. Three plus one plus two more is six. So I can sell it here. And so I throw that away. I put one of my things there. And I increase my bank account by one, two, three, four, five, six. And boom. I've got as much savings as Jen does. And more importantly, I've now got enough money in the bank so that I can keep on paying for my loan and my salaries. But oh, it sucked. I had to give Jen this thousand. I was unhappy about that. But you know, but the interesting thing is for Jen to make that move, she had to pay a thousand to leapfrog. So it all kind of came out in the wash. Um, anyway, so anyway, so that was my second action. And now it's time for Jen's second action. Interestingly, she's got a grand now. She could pay to hopscotch around and whatnot. But interestingly, here's what Jen's gonna do. She is going to pass. Now, no, it doesn't matter. Even if there are other people here, it's always free to move to this space. She is gonna pass. It doesn't cost her anything. And, um, but remember, you have the option when you, first of all, by coming here, she gets to change the turn order. So from now on, until sometime in the future I pass, I get to be first player, or I'm sorry, gah! From now on, until sometime in the future I pass, Jen gets to be first player.
But more importantly, Jed has the option of, this is what these icons mean, of issuing a press release about what wine she is going to submit to the fair that's coming up at the end of next year. And she is going to do that. Which means she has to take one of these wines uh, determine its value and then submit it to the fair and it's gone. She will lose that wine. Now let's think about this. This has a value of three currently. This has a value of two plus one so it's a value of three as well. Now Jen was hoping she was going to put this wine in, had a value of three. She was going to take those other two cubes and increase it and then boom all the cubes would be gone and I wouldn't have been able to get any. But I was able to get those cubes so Jen, if she wants to submit this, well, see, there's one thing she can do. She could activate this expert, and this expert lets her add a cube anywhere. She could add a cube to Lisbon, and then she could use that cube to increase the quality of this wine. But I don't think she's going to do that. She's going to save this guy for later, just in case she needs him. Because she might, if, if she if he uses this guy, she cannot use him as an expert at the fair. So right now, she's planning on saving him. She won't be able to use this girl at the fair. She's already been tapped. But she's hoping to use this guy at the fair if she needs it to help win. So, Jen is not going to submit this because it's lower quality and she has no cubes. She's going to submit this bad boy. Now, this has a value of 3 because it has a quality of 3. Now she could increase it to a quality of four if she wanted to take it, and what the heck, she will. She is, I mean, you know, because this is coming from Region 5, from Algarve, she's going to cash in some of the Algarve's renown, and that will increase the value of this from three to, where is it, to four. So, she is submitting a value 4 wine. She could increase it to a value 5 if she wanted to use this guy, but she's going to save that guy. So, it's a value 4 wine. So, now, that means a couple of things. We come over here to this handy dandy chart, and we can see that if it's a value 4 wine, 3 to 4, and so it's a 4. It didn't quite make it to a 5. We would have crossed the next threshold, but it only made it to 4. So, that means she takes this marker, this number 1 marker, because this represents the overall... Uh, you know uh, the the quality of the wine. Uh, 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 it, it, it's it's competitive value. This represents the competitive value of this wine. It's a one. It could have been a two, a three, or a four, or even higher. But it's a one. So now she takes this. And she can put it in any of these six slots. This is another kind of uh, area control thing. Once she grabs this, there are there you know in a four player game. Four people will ultimately enter a wine into this fair. So four of these six spots will be taken. By coming here, Jen is, gra is getting first dibs on one of these spots. And by doing it, she will get two bonuses. She will immediately either get three bucks, get a helper, she can draw another helper from the four that are over here, or get plus two points in the fair so she has a better chance of winning in the fair. Now, I think Jen... Knowing Jen, she never wants to go into debt. She hates that. And she doesn't want to waste time having to go to the bank to make a withdrawal to get more money. So I think Jen is going to try and you know, put this here and immediately, immediately get three bucks. One, two, three. So now she's back in the cash. So she could maybe get another vineyard or she could do upgrades, etc., etc. So by, you know, this, is, this represents the wine she's submitting that she issued the press release for. She put it over here. She gets three. And now as well, right now, she will score points, fair points, equal to the current level of green and yellow. Green is one and yellow is one. So she has just scored one, two points in the fair. Now the fair hasn't actually happened yet, but you can, she's kind of locked in two points in the competition for whoever won the fair. Now whoever wins the, whoever comes in first in the first fair gets nine points. Second fair, 12, 50, and the third fair, 15 points. And you know, and the spread keeps getting bigger and bigger. So there's a lot of points to be had for winning the fair. And currently Jen is in the lead because she took it. Now if she had say, taken this one down here, she could have gotten two points towards the fair, plus a point for green and a point for red. But she wanted the money. You know, and that means she would, if she'd done this, she would have been at four points. She would have been well in the lead already. But she wanted the money so she could buy some more stuff. Now, there's one other thing this choice meant. When the fair comes around at the end of the third year, Jen will only be able to deploy green and yellow experts. Now, she's saving this guy, this green expert, so she can use him if she needs to to score more points. So that's why, really, because she had a green expert, she had to choose between this one, this one, and this one. So it's really, did she want these three bucks, this extra, you know, or you know, this space? And so she chose this one. And if she gets a helper along the way, another green helper or a yellow helper, 
Um, it could potentially help her, but here's the tricky thing. Because this is a relatively low quality wine, remember this could have gone up to a value four. This means she will only be able to deploy one expert at the fair. Because this wine is really not very good, it's going to be hard for her to get experts to talk it up. But she has one green expert, so she's set. If she wants to, she can play one expert, it could be this guy, and in the fair, she would be able to add more points based on whatever the value of green is at the fair. But see, that's the tricky thing. We don't know how valuable green is going to be until the fair comes around. So that's why it's good for Jen to go now because she immediately gets a benefit, immediately. But if she waited, she could have a better idea of what the landscape looks like and maybe choose a better spot over here. But anyway, so she went early. She's issued the press release and now there is one more thing she gets to do. When you issue a press release, uh, there's a lot of stuff you do. And the last thing is, because, here, here's the wine again. This is the actual wine. It's a four value white wine from um, region five, from Lisboa. And wouldn't you know, what she can do is after she issues the press release, these experts, you know, these rich people who love wine, they read her press release. And if they like what they see, they will call her up and form a relationship. And as it happens, this guy likes that, remember, because um, A, Alexander, liked that it was a white wine. B, for Beatrice, likes that it's at least value four. And C, for Constantino, likes that it is from region, what was it, region five. So all three of these rich people are very excited about this press release. And so all three of them are calling up Jen saying, hi, we'd like to hear more about your wine. We'd like to be friends because we like wine and we're rich and we got nothing better to do with our times. And so now that this has worked out very well for Jen. Jen could make friends with any of them. Now, unfortunately, Jen would like to make friends and or I should say develop a relationship i.e. put a barrel down for all three because all three of them like her wine. But unfortunately, the maximum you can do is two. So Jen has to choose which two of these rich, crazy rich people who love these crazy wine aficionados will Jen develop a relationship with. Because if she gets it with Alexander, she gets access to all of these bonuses. With Beatrice, all of these bonuses. And with Constantino, all of these bonuses. So she's got to think about who does, you know, who does she not want bonuses from? Now, I know she definitely wants one from Alexander. Definitely. She wants a relationship with that dude. Totally. Um, right, and let's see, Beatrice, Be because Alexander lets her buy um, wineries for only one buck. Normally they cost three, but Alexander can get her a discount and buy for one. Beatrice lets you get a discount on vineyards for two, so you can, that's a big deal. And Constantino lets you get experts for nothing. What the heck, Jen's gonna take Beatrice. Uh, girls gotta stick together. So Jen has made relationships with two of the characters and even though because she couldn't do a third and now there's a very important thing about developing relationships with these characters anytime you want either before or after you take your action see this is all from Jen's action coming here Jen came here she issued a press release and um, and whenever you do an action after you do that action if you want you can give one of those people some wine or anybody that you have a current relationship with, you can give them wine. Jen has one wine left over. Now, it doesn't matter what wine it is. It doesn't matter what its color is, what its quality is, what its value is, it doesn't matter. Any wine will do. These people are winos. They love their wine, they'll take anything. This is a bribe, basically. So, as a free action, now that Jen has relationships with two of these rich people, Jen is gonna send her last wine to one of them to get a bonus action. So Jen is going to send that wine up here to Alexander. And because he did, Jen takes the barrel and moves it. To, she can move it to any of these spots and get that advantage. She's going to move it here, which means now she gets a bonus action of buying a winery for only $1 instead of the normal three and putting a cube like normal. So Jen's got to only have to pay a one instead of three. She didn't have to use one of her precious 12 actions to do this. This is a free action. She gave up a cheap wine, but she's getting an action out of it. And she's going to buy a winery for 66% uh, you know, discount. And where is she going to put this winery? She's going to put it right here. Because that means this region now 
produces higher quality wine. And she needed to do that because at the end of the year, which we're almost at, at the end of the year, if she hadn't produced higher quality wine, this vineyard would have produced nothing. But now the winery will produce high enough quality so that Jen will get a wine out of that region. All right. So that was a very busy second action for Jen. To recap, she came here, she got to change player order, she issued a press release, which um, allowed her to you know, submit a wine, which gave her some money. It also gave her a couple of points because of the green yellow. And she uh, made friends with two people, and then as a bonus, and now every turn, every one of your 12 actions, you can give up a wine to one of these rich people and do another one of their actions. You can never do the same one in a row. Jen can't do this one again. She has to choose a different. But, or you know, she could give one to Beatrice and do one of these actions. But anyway, so that's a big deal. Jen now has friends in high places. As long as she keeps reducing wine that she doesn't mind giving away to them, she can get bonus, she can do more than 12 actions. That's a huge, powerful thing. But anyway, that was Jen's second move. I've done my second move. And so now we move on to banking. Okay. Jen gets one from her dividends. I lose one from my loans. And then I lose two more, one, two, because I got to pay the salary of these two dopes, but they're going to make me some good wine, so it'll be worth it. All right, so uh, that's the banking. We pay our dividends and we pay our salary. Now we move on to production. Let's go with me. Now, first of all, remember everything slides. So this thing slides over here. If I don't do something with it next year, it'll be gone. This thing slides over here and boom, it has now jumped in value by two more points. This is now a value five wine, just because I let it sit there and age for a while. Okay, but now I get to produce new wine. Uh, and I get to produce two, one for each of my estates. This estate, let's rewind once again, is two plus one for the winery, plus two for the, uh, for the scientist, means it produces a value five, or a quality, a quality five red wine. Okay, and it's really a value of six because it's sitting there in the cellar. This place over here, same deal. Two plus one plus two means it's a, a quality five. Give me another five. And this time, so Jen's got a five white and, or I'm sorry, I've got a five white and a five red and two other wines. So, you know, Jen's made friends in high places. She's doing a lot of cool stuff. She's got more money in the bank, but I've actually got the good wine. I've got the good stuff. So we'll see how all this works out. Okay, now let's see what Jen produces. She's got two estates. She's going to produce two wine. Now this one, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I totally forgot, totally forgot. Oh, I'd like to say that this was a value five and this is a value five, but we forgot about the storms. I had to subtract two. So this is really a value three. I'm sorry, no, a quality three and a quality three because it was a very bad year. But fortunately, I produce such high quality wines. My, um, my wine is basically weatherproof. It'll always, it, you know, it'll always be decent. And in the future, if I have some good years, it can be really good. It can start coming out at a quality seven or eight or something like that, who knows? Anyway, so I produce, I've got four wines now, each one of them, quality level three. This one has a value of six and this one has a value of four. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. Oh, 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 whoops, I totally forgot, by the way. When Jen used her, her special power to um, buy a winery on the cheap, as you can see, the board is reminding me, she had to increase the renown of the region so, region eight, Jen's the one she has a monopoly on that I don't have a foothold in, just got some quality back. So that was another benefit for um, you know, calling in that favor and giving up the wine. Okay, so now Jen, she's gonna produce two wines as well. And remember, it starts out at minus two. So it's minus two, plus two is a white, uh, wash, plus one more means Jen produces, she just barely gets a wine out and it's a lousy level one you know, va or quality one wine. And this place also does the same thing, produces another level one white wine. So I've got twice as much wine, it's more than twice as good as Jen's, but Jen's got more money in the bank and she's got influential friends and she's already winning on the fair. But as you might imagine, I'm gonna do pretty good in the fair because I'm gonna submit a really, really nice wine. So we'll see how all that works out. Okay, there we go, that was the second year. Oh, and also of course, Let's not forget, Jen took first player. So now Jen is first player moving on into our third year. In our third year, we reveal, bye bye Da da da. Oh, it's still, it's crappy, but it's not so crappy. Now it's, you know, it's, it's cloudy. It was a cloudy year. So all the wine comes out at a minus one. 
Yellow jumps up two, and red jumps up one. And so now Jen is kind of bummed, because her expert, her green expert, is really not that good. Jen really wants to get a yellow expert, which is good, actually, because remember, Jen could play a green or a yellow expert, and currently, yellow is the expert to beat. So this year, Jen might come over here to try and get a yellow expert, but we'll see. All right, and the uh, three pe the rich people have changed. Well, actually, no, Alexander still likes white wines, but Beatrice is a bit more picky now. Now she wants value six, or I'm sorry, yeah, value six wines, and Constantino wants wines from regions one, two, five, and six. So, uh, which is good for me because I'm producing from region, ouch, region five. Okay, so there we go. Jen is first now. Another benefit of having moved back to the center is from the center, you can get any place without having to you know, pay hopscotch. Right, so Jen's got 3,000 on her. She's got one expert. What does she like to do? I think, you know, it's all about making the wine. Jen's gonna come over here, she's gonna buy another vineyard. And, it does, and there's nobody here, and it, she didn't have to go far, so it doesn't cost her anything other than the cost of the, her third vineyard. Now, she's got 3,000. She does not want to, she, she wants to keep earning this cash if she can. So I think that means she's gonna just pay all 3,000 she's got, and she's gonna get the cheapest, she's, she's gonna set up a new estate, where's her, a new estate in Miho. Because that is the cheapest um, um, place, cost her three, so it comes over here, and the reminder is, this place could never be upgraded with a seller. She'll put it over here, and she's got, uh, and this place will produce, interestingly, all Jen produces is white wine. That's too bad. Alrighty, so there we go. So Jen's now gonna produce three wines at the end of the year, although they're all low to middling quality, and in fact, they're all gonna get minus one because of the cloudy weather. But so far, Jen has not had to take a loan yet. So, that was her turn. Now it is my turn. Right, and at the end of the year, I'm gonna owe three bucks. One, two, three, one, two, th or one, two, three, one, two, three. I could go two more years um, paying my debts before I have to worry about getting more money in the bank. But I have no cash on hand either. That's not good. I need to get me some cash money. Now, I could declare a wine like Jen did, and uh, you know, basically pass and declare a wine and get three bucks. But I think, <sighs> I think I'm gonna go to the bank. I'm gonna do a withdrawal. I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. So I'm gonna come here. Hmm. Oh, I'd really like to have some more money in the bank first though. I'd really like to sell some more, but I can't. I cannot do this action a second time. And it's a shame because I've got all these really nice wines that I could sell and get a lot more money into the bank. So maybe I shouldn't. Now what can I do with no money? Now of course, I could take another loan, get 3,000 more, and then I start losing two. That'd be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yikes. But I could get some more money if I, if I take another loan. Now I could do like just ended and pass. It doesn't cost me anything. I could get some money like Jen did, and then I'd have some cash on hand. But the heck with it. I'm gonna take another loan. In for a penny, in for a pound. I am I'm dropped down and I can't go any farther. I've, I've got a level two loan. I'm gonna owe two bucks at the end of the year, but I've got another 3,000 cash on hand. All right, so now I got three grand. What am I gonna do with it? Hmm. Well, I don't wanna. I don't, want to, I don't want to have to pay to. I, I don't want to get a vineyard because I'm not gonna pay Jen again. That'd be crazy. I could come up here, I'd have to pay, all 3,000 of my money would go, but I'd get another seller so that all these things would increase in, in quality too. So that's kind of nice. But then, I'd, once again, I'd have no money. Now what I, what, I, what I really should do is try to only move one space away so that for my second action, I could move back and sell some more without having to pay to hopscotch twice. So if I'm only gonna move one location, what the heck, let's sell some wine to the foreign market. I haven't done that yet, have I? You've seen everything else. Let's sell some wine. Okay, we've seen selling to the local market. I'm gonna sell to the foreign market now. Now it's the same thing, all these spaces. Now the foreign market's a bit more picky than the local market. It has to have at least, at least a value of six. Do I have any value? Oh shoot, I do. I have this one, which is a quality three plus three. I could sell that to the foreign market. That would immediately score me three points and, you know, basically if I put my if I sell it and put it here, three points immediately, plus at the end of the game, if I have the majority of this, because each of these columns represents a country. Let's say this is the United States. So if I have the majority of barrels here, I'll score six bonus points at the end of the game, if I were to sell. 
So, you know, it's important to get a few barrels here, but if you can, you want to wait till they're really high quality because then you could get a lot more points by selling to the more prestigious countries. So maybe I don't want to sell foreign. Oh, I could buy an expert. That's not a bad idea. I have no experts and they're cheap and they could help me because I know Jen has at least one expert. She's going to be able to provide one more point. Yeah, what the heck, let's get some experts. I'm going to jump up here. It doesn't cost me anything. And now I can pay one or 2,000 to buy one or two experts. And what are out? Now remember, I know yellow is the most valuable, so I think I will get a yellow expert. Not necessarily for his ability to shuffle vineyard decks, but for his ability to help me at the wine. So that was 1,000. Now I'm really broke. Do I want to, pay in, do I want to buy another one? Let's see, the yellow I revealed, this is an interesting ability. This one basically, over the course of the game, you develop more and more relationships. And you know, so all these barrels, you have more relationships with the rich people, you have more business co contracts. And you're getting to the point where, crap, I, you know, I really need um, to pull a barrel back. I really don't need the help of this rich person anymore. I need that barrel to go somewhere else. This guy lets me pull a barrel back into my supply. Basically, this guy lets me break a contract, break a relationship, so I can get a barrel back. Now, there's another way to break barrels back, which is this action over here, but it only applies to the local market. This guy lets me get any barrel back. I'm not really that interested in that one. And I've already got a shuffle, so what the heck, let's take this one. If I ever get in a spot where I have to pay Jen money to move again, uh-uh, this guy will let me avoid that. So I'll pay another thousand. And plus, you know, either I use it for that ability or I save him and he can give me another point if I use him in a fair. All right, so that was my first action. Now we move on to second actions. Jen has one more action before the fair. Now she's already committed to the fair. What does she want to do? Now, she was thinking she might come and get an expert, a yellow expert, so that she might have a better chance at the fair, but now she would have to pay me. And uh-uh, she refuses. She refuses to give me money. Never mind the fact that she has no cash on hand at all. Oh crap, she has no cash on hand. It might be time for her to divest. I think she's gonna to have to. She's gonna divest, that'll give her 2,000, so she's got some money she can spend. And now where's that money gonna go? Um. I think she's going to get a seller. It's about time, isn't it? She's going to come over here. It cost her 2000 She just divested to get this 2000 to buy a seller. And now she can put it in any of her estates. Now, these estates both by default produce level threes. This estate produces a level two. This one has a plus one on it. This will give it a plus two. So by putting it here, this means by default, she would be producing, um, the, the quality is three, Plus four, plus. She'd be producing um, fa value five stuff in this region. That's pretty good. Let's say she goes there. So she's immediately or increased the value of this wine to two. So that's pretty nice. Plus, remember, every time you do a, uh, what's it? I can't think of the word. A seller, it increases the renown of the associated region. So Jen's monopoly region has just increased in renown again. So she can use those cubes, and I don't have access to those cubes. Okay. So that was Jen's second turn, and now it's my second turn. And remember, I, I, one of the reasons I came up here is so I could jump right back here. It doesn't cost me anything, and I'm gonna sell another wine to the local market so I can get some more cash into the bank. Let's see, and so I've got, these are both quality three and value three. These, this is quality f value four, and this is value six. Now I wanna save this for the fair if I can. So if I do this, it's a value four, Ah, that's too bad. If I do a value four, that means it has to come into, it has to be sold into this restaurant instead of this one. And now here's the thing. If I could sell a wine that would come into this restaurant, let's say, so I have like two here, anytime I want, I could pull my two barrels out of, I could pull two barrels out of one restaurant and so I get them back in my, so I, so I could you know, develop relations with other people, and I would get to put two cubes on any region I want, which I could then use subsequently. So if I could, it'd be better to put, to develop another contract with this hotel. But that means I, I have to have at least a value of five or six or seven, which means I'd have to give up my value six. It's a value six red. Oh, actually it's no good. Well, actually that's not, it's a value six red. I've already filled value six, but I could sell it as a value five. And now that unfortunately means I'd only get five income from it into the bank, but I'd have two here and I could pull them out and that means I could put more renown. But here's the thing, putting renown into my region helps Jen because she might steal those renown cubes. 
So I don't think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna give up on my opportunity to get the, the two, the, 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 the pair in a given, and I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna sell this one, because if I don't sell this thing, it's gonna go away, it's gonna disappear, and that won't be good. So I'm gonna sell this, because it'll age out of my warehouse. It's a, um, it's a three, quality three, which means value three, and I cannot pump it up, because I don't have any, what do you call it, uh, any renown cubes for the region, so it's a three, I, and so it goes, and puts there, and I've just gotten one, two, three. And that's bought me a little bit more breathing room, got back up to four more points, and I got a little bit more breathing room with the bank. All right, yikes. Now I can get out of these loans anytime I want by going to the bank and then taking money out of my account and paying, I'd have to pay four to get rid of my first loan and three to get rid of my second loan. So I can get rid of those anytime I want because I've got 11 bucks in the bank if I go to the bank. We'll worry about that later. Okay. Yeesh. All right, so that was my second move, right? Yes, it was my second move. And so now we move on to banking. And Jen, she divested, so she gets no income. I lose two bucks, one, two. And then I lose two more, one, two, for my scientists. So we're done with the banking. We produce, everything slides, this slides, this slides. And now it is a value eight. And this is still a value four. Jen's two things slide. And so this is now, I mean, it's still a value two. And now we produce, and okay, there's minus one this year. So this place would be producing a five, but it's a four because of the minus one. It's a four red. This place would be producing a five, but instead it's a four, so it's a four white. Okay. And Jen, she does not produce this, but she's gonna produce three because she's got three vineyards. So this place is um, two, three, minus one for the weather is a two, it's two white. This place is a three, minus one because of the weather, is a two white. And this place is a two minus one, so it's a one white. And now the interesting thing is, I totally forgot. Jen, after she did her second move, she could have given up another wine. She could have thrown another one of these wines and gotten another bonus action. Like for instance, it would have let her get another vineyard for cheap, or it would have let her do a sale, or it would have let her do a foreign sale or a local sale, or she could have taken these barrels and claimed these bonus points. The first person who ever moves a barrel to these, once the barrels are here, they cannot move. They're stuck there for the rest of the game, but you've locked in four points for every scientist at the end of the game, or a dollar, a point for every dollar, as opposed to whoever gets there later gets two point, or a dollar for every, or point for every two dollars. So Jen could have done that. She could, she had excess wine. She could have gotten another favor from a rich dude. But let's say she didn't because none of her wine, um, yeah. Well, none of her wines were gonna go away. She can do it later. Let's just, because you know, she might wanna save these wines to do actions out there as well. But strictly speaking, she should have probably done a, she should have taken advantage and done a second action. But all her values were so low and she had no more money. So anyway, let's just say we're done. We've finished our banking and now it's time for the fair. Okay, folks. Now, Jen has already issued her press release a while ago, so she does nothing. I now have to submit mine to the fair as well. I have all four of these to choose from, and I have the benefit of knowing that Jen's already at two points, and that's the space she's chosen, so she has one expert she could play, but that expert, if she plays it, would only increase her score from two to three. So the best, the, all I gotta do is beat a three, and I win this fair, definitely. So, let's figure out what I'm gonna donate. Now, I could get rid of this because, again, it's gonna, you know, it's, it's gonna age away at the end of the next year if I don't use it now. If I put this in, it's a value three, which means I would be able to use one expert as well. You know what, what the heck? Jen came in so low, I, I wanna save all these higher quality ones for selling to the foreign market or selling to the local, et cetera, et cetera. Although, oh wait, wait, wait. This is also my chance to make friends. That's very important too. So, they want white wines. So I don't think I'm gonna sell any of my reds. They um, want value six. Neither of these are value six. Or, or, you know, this one is a value eight, so I could if I if I gave that one up, but then it'd be it would be a red, and he wouldn't care. So let's say I give up on that. But region five, these are all from region five. So yeah, that's cool. I'm gonna give up this one 
Because it's, it's literally my lowest value thing, and if I don't do something with it, it's going to just, you know, age away. So I'm going to submit this. Not my best wine, but that's okay, because I'm still going to win it anyway. So, it's a three, which means, like Jen, I will only get to submit, oh, where is it? Like Jen, I will only, you know, th uh, three or four means I get to place this guy, a level one. Now, which of these spaces am I going to grab? Do I want some money? I want some money pretty bad. I am hurting for money, so even, I mean, I could take two bonus points, but I'm going to win anyway. I already have experts. I'm going to take the money. So I'm going to get three bucks. Yay. And there's, you know, plus them. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, plus the excess money I had from, okay. So I, I get some money, and now this means I will be able to use red and blue, um, what do you call it, experts? Now, it's too bad. I've got a yellow expert, and that gives me the most points, but that's okay. I'm going to win anyway. But... Because I've done this, I now score points equal to red and blue. Red is worth one, and blue, they're both worth one. So I score two as well. Oh, I'm only two. But now, we can both play an expert. Oh, shoot. I could play a blue expert, Jen could play a green expert, and we'd be tied again. Oh, as much as I want that money, I think instead of having places here, I, I, I put the money back, I'm going to come down here. Because the bonus is, I immediately score one, two points. One, two points, plus one more point for being blue, plus two more points, because you know it's a yellow space, two more points for being yellow. So that's a total of one, two, three, four, five. So right off the bat, boom, I am at five. Jen cannot touch me. I've totally won. All right. But unfortunately, I didn't get the money. I would have liked that money, but I wanted to win this, this uh, fair more. Okay. So... We have now, everybody has submitted. Oh, and also, before the fair goes on, I've submitted. And again, the rich people come around and say, hey, we heard about this wine you submitted. Why, it's a white wine. Alexander says, I love it. And I say, well, hey, let's have a relationship. Beatrice says, oh, it's a crappy low-quality wine or low-value wine. I don't care. So I skip her. But Constantino says, why, did that wine come from Region 5, uh, Lisboa? Yes, it did, Constantino. Well, I'd like to be your friend, too. So now, boom, I've got two relationships just like Jen does, although with, with one of them, a different person. Okay. So there we go. So I've developed my relationships. Now I cannot use those relationships right now because you can only use them on steps one and two. And we're in the fair. So I can't leverage that relationship right now. I'll use it later. And Jen can't do anything more with her relationships. So we are done with the fair. And uh, is there anything else? Uh, pieces. Right, so now we get to the part where everybody can secret, you know, what everybody does is they take expert cards they've still got and they hold them secretly in their hands and they secretly choose what experts they want to add to the fair. And then everybody reveals at the same time because, you know, people may have been planning for this and they may have uh, multiple experts of the right type that could give them a lot of points. The fair isn't over. If Jen, well, actually it is, it is. If Jen plays this green expert, because Jen can play a green or a yellow expert, that will give her plus one point. It won't be enough. So I've already won. So it does not behoove me to play any experts because here's the deal. If you use your expert in a fair, he's gone forever. When you use them for their special abilities, they untap and you can use them again later. If you use them in the fair, they are lost forever. So Jen has no reason to use this guy. She still won't win and he'll be gone. So Jen reveals, bah, I'm not playing anything. And I reveal, Bah, I'm not playing anything. So that part gets skipped effectively and we stay and then we see that, hey, I won. I score nine points. Where's the point? I'm finally on the board at nine points. And now in a two player game, well, it's interesting. The, the, the game comes with a bunch of variants and um, most of them I ignore because they make the game a little more complex, but I do follow this one. In a two player game, it says, whoever comes in first gets the high point. Whoever comes in second, doesn't get second place, but gets the third place. So Jen came in second, so she got one, two, three points. Alrighty, so I've scored nine points, Jen scored three points, but Jen's got four more points than me based on her bank account. Jen is not hemorrhaging money, but I'm making high quality wine, she is making more low quality wine. We both have relationships now, so we could both start leveraging them, and the last thing we do at the end of the fair as we move here, which means we rearrange um, uh, player turn order based on whoever came in last, whoever lost the fair becomes first player. So that was Jen, she keeps first player. Then we move on to year number four. The first thing we do is, this reminds us, we can untap any um, experts we used previously. And Jen, uh, use this guy right off, or this lady, she can untap him, so she's got her, her again to use. And then 
We begin again. It's Jen's first action. Here's where we are. We're both broke. I've got a thousand. Jen's got nothing. Um, but I'm hemorrhaging money. Jen's still making money. And we, uh, we start going again. Oh, and the interesting thing is, none of the fair values have changed. The fair does not reset. I'm in the lead, which means I am already in the lead for the next fair we are going to have in two years because I've already gotten the prestige of the, winning the previous fair. Also, alcohol content is, is important. This content value is never going to go down. But let's see what the new year brings us. Finally, a sunny day. Everything gets plus one. Green increases two, one, two, and yellow increases one. So now aroma and um, alcohol are still the most important things. Now, Alexander likes red wine. Beatrice really wants to see some high-quality stuff, or value stuff she wants to see eight. And now, Constant um, Constantino wants stuff from regions one, two, three, and eight. And we are basically now halfway through the game. We've done the first three years. We have three more years to go. And um, we are both in a situation now where we can use some of our excess wine to get favors and do bonus actions. Jen's got a bunch of cheap, crappy wines, so she doesn't mind giving them away. I've got high-quality wines. I want to use them to get points off of the individual markets. I want to continue to win over here. i got to pay off my debts because this is killing me. Some, i got to go to the bank pretty soon. If I were to go to the bank, I could, like I said, I could pay seven and get, uh, you know, and, and get into the black. And, but then I'd still have to keep paying the salary of my guy so I could keep producing higher quality wine and so on. And there you go, folks. That is Vinos. And we're only at the halfway mark. Things just get tougher and more complex and more tight as, um, you know, eventually I'm going to get a third one. Am I going to try and come over here and muscle into Jen's territory? Am I going to try and get this last Lisbon? And get a third thing. Am I going to try and get a new bonus? Am I going to try and get some of the wines that instantly give me a leg up? Or maybe Jen wants to get a leg up in the contest because that's what these ones do. Um, you know, or get more helpers, or you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It remains to be seen, but I am wiped out and done. So I'm going to stop right there and let you guys go to final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.